this is one of those prime examples of um, uh, one of those films you actually get into the industry for, where uh, you do a combination of practical and digital creatures um, that have real personalities. And um, you know, normally we, we just get to make like a, a hand or a claw or something like that and then makeup effects and nothing really in between. Um, but we've been able to participate a lot with the bigger builds and that kind of stuff. And um, we don't really get that opportunity anymore. And it's just in the context of a story that um, it's just a lot of fun. They're not just, you know, they don't just slobber and growl, they have real personalities. It was Michael's decision, it was mainly his details. Like it was, um, there were so many different designs that came. Uh, there was lots of different versions of each one, but he sort of brought everything in. A lot of these creatures, um, his decisions were made about more uh, personality types of detail um, and how the different slimes would reflect that and how just the different parts would reflect that. So it wasn't necessarily just being bigger and grand, you know, more grand. It was more, um, yeah, it was a little fiddly details. And that's the sort of stuff that I really liked because it's, it's those little uh, comedic details that um, uh, people feel the effect of but don't actually have, you know, their attention drawn to. And uh, yeah, Michael was really good with those kinds of details. The best research and the best go-to source was anything medical online with tumors, slimes, moss, fungus, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Um, because it was because they're all mutated creatures. It's not like they're designed on purpose. You know, it, it it's like they really aren't meant to be the way that they are. So, you know, there was just lots of way too much time spent on looking at tumors and pustules and slimes and all that kind of stuff and um but you know it was all that stuff that we kind of brought into these creatures to make it look like they're all here by accident the landscape of australia has been perfect for this because it can look like anything it can look like anything can live here any one of these creatures could totally live in australia um, it looks futuristic it looks modern it can look like look like another planet it's just perfect for this and especially where so many areas are, are just look like wasteland because they are, and then other places that just look like they've just been forgotten about. It's all here. And uh, yeah, I think it's just the perfect place to make something like this. I do have a favorite, but it changes constantly. Um, there's, uh, I mean, that we, you know, there's all the, the small sniffer creatures like these ones here. Um, these were a lot of fun to make. Uh, which are all like hand puppets and all that kind of stuff. Um, really loved building Mavis um, when she came to life. Toby Barron was the puppeteer who brought her to life. Um, and um, she was one of those rare cases where you just see her, you forget that she's made out of fiberglass, you forget that there's an actress doing her lines, and you forget that there's a puppeteer. She's just Mavis. And um, you sort of really get into this to have those moments. Um, so uh, she's a highlight, but I think my favorite would probably be um, what is currently called the buzzard, which is this character here, um, because we got to do all that practically. And, um, you know, we, we, we were pretty sure that at some point it was going to be replaced. Maybe by the time this comes out, he'll be replaced. I don't know, but um, we still got to build it anyway um, and um, do all the action stuff with it. So... Um, it changes. At the moment, it's a cross between Mavis and the Buzzard. The biggest challenge has been Mavis. Um, well, actually, for the same reason all of them have been a challenge, is just the time. Um, when I came on, I think we had about five weeks of pre, maybe a bit less. Um, but there was just such a great big build and such a short amount of time. Um, I think that was the biggest, that's always the biggest issue, but I really felt it on this one. Um, like we would just finish one, one deadline and then the next day would have another one. And then two days after that would have another one. And it just kept on going and going and going. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd say to the crew, we just have to get through this one. We can relax. Well, we've only got a couple of weeks left and I'm still saying that. Um, but, um, that just seems to be the case with some of these movies. But you kind of take that. That's just, that's just what it is. It's totally worth going through that because uh, this film really is uh, an opportunity. 
I think the most rewarding part of this job, um, and I've been able to say this from the very beginning of my career, is even if you have a really bad day, which is rare, um, but you still go home thinking, I've just had the worst day doing something I absolutely love. And um, that's something that um, I've never taken for granted. And you know, at the end of the day, we, we get paid to wake up, come to work and build monsters. And that will never go away. Finding that balance between making them scary and humorous, I actually think, I don't actually think it's so much in the design or the sculpt. I actually think, like from our perspective, we, we, we play it serious in terms of how we sculpt it. And we really look at where that reference comes from. Um, because we want to um, make it realistic. So we want to get the scales right, the colors right, the slimes right. But what makes it humorous is, uh, is actually more the context in which it's seen. It's not actually that we try and design something that's too humorous. It may be over the top, because that's a lot of fun. Um, but even if you do something over the top, you still need to have the direct reference to make it that believable and for, for people to accept it. But um, in terms of the humor, I think that's much more of a context thing. And it's a lot more about giving these things a, a personality and a character. That's where the humor comes through.